A Fox News alert today. Former President Trump facing the official deadline to come up with $454 million in that bond for his New York civil case. So look at let's look at what Letitia game, uh, James can do. She can freeze the bank accounts, which some people expect that she may try to do. She can collect rent from the tenants, but she also has to manage the buildings if she decides to initiate proceedings to seize Trump uh, properties that includes Trump Tower. Also, this is a big factor, right? Potentially target properties outside of New York. That means she would be going after Mar-a-Lago. All right, what is the president's, the former president's options? He can appeal to the higher court. He can sell some of his properties to raise some funds. He can seek financial assistance from some of his wealthy friends. He has a lot of them. Or he can sell the stock from Truth Social. Now, that's expected, some analysts are saying, to go public sometime this week. Or he can do the nuclear option and file for bankruptcy. Let's uh, go to Jonathan Turley. He's a GWU law uh, professor and he, uh, analyst for Fox News. Jonathan Turley is joining us right now. So, Jonathan, I, I guess what do you expect? You've been following this case, but you've also been a lawyer for a long time. What do you expect to happen today? Well, Lawrence, the obvious uh, nuclear option that you mentioned would be bankruptcy if you really wanted to uh, shut this down. But that would come at political costs. It would cause great disruption to his uh, business. So people don't expect that uh, to happen, but we don't know. The, pre the former president said he has the cash uh, or, or close to it. Uh, but we are still all left in limbo here. His attorneys have said that the judge's figure <clears throat> makes a bond virtually impossible according to them you know he could have said a trillion dollars he mm -hmm. could have said bring me lava from the surface of mars their their view is we can't do that because you can't float a bond uh, without cash and this is a real estate business what leaves many of us mystified is why the court couldn't have taken reasonable measures here to say look you have a bunch of fixed assets they're not going anywhere mm -hmm. uh, we're going to come up with an agreement that we're going to take that hundred million dollars in cash and then we'll come up with an agreement that you can't change or leverage what you have in those fixed assets but there was no interest at all uh, by attorney general james it appears or the trial court to mm -hmm. make that happen you no know, jonathan i hate asking process questions but you know, we're living in unprecedented times. So I guess the big question is, okay, he's waiting for the appellate court, but also there's this option to go to the high court to talk about civil asset forfeiture. We know Ruth Bader Ginsburg had some thoughts on that, and she was a progressive. I guess the question is, what does the process look like? Does he have to wait for the appellate court to rule before he can take this to a higher court? Well, Lawrence, most of us were hoping that New York judges would step in and say enough that, look, th this has really done great damage to the New York legal system and how it's perceived internationally. Uh, th this is thrilling for many people in New York who, after all, elected James on a pledge to bag Trump for something. So mm -hmm. this is obviously playing well to the New York base. But outside New York, and particularly international businesses, are looking at this, I think, with a degree of horror that a judge could come up with a figure so large you have to sell parts of your business just to get an appeal. So the Court of Appeals could step in here and say, look, we need mm -hmm. to come up with a reasonable resolution here so that someone can look at a judgment by just one person. Now, the process, Lawrence, going forward is very simple. I mean, you only need $350 uh, to go and try to grab someone's assets. The mm -hmm. most obvious thing is to go to try to nail any cash assets in banks. Yeah. My assumption is that the Trump's people have kept uh, any cash they have in third party mm -hmm. accounts until the last minute. Yeah. But even if you want to seize businesses like fixed assets, uh, it takes about you know, over 60 days to actually do a sheriff's sale. Mm -hmm. And you, you have to unravel what are very complex systems here. Like most people in this field, Trump has likely leveraged and had partnerships going through all of these fixed properties. Yeah, it, so it, it is not going to be an overnight process if that's what New Yorkers are hoping for. It's such a complicated ma matter, and they're rushing it, which is so concerning. And, you, and I just got to ask the question. There's 27, I think, uh, Republican attorney generals. What if they start targeting Democrats? I mean, that, that's not how we want our justice system to go. Jonathan Turley, thanks so much for joining the program. Thank you, Lawrence.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.